Have you ever found yourself having a frustrating situation with someone else and then that situation keeps coming back to you and going round and round in your mind all day, kind of ruining your day? Let's look at one of the things that can cause that and how to deal with it. How to break a curse that happens in everyday life. Let me briefly explain what a curse is because you might be thinking it's something only used by occult involving sacrifice and it's deep stuff. Whereas in reality, we curse each other daily by some of our actions and attitudes and the words that we use. When I get angry with someone, and frustrated, and then I start to want to punish them, I'm releasing a curse. I want them to not do well in that day. The opposite of that is blessing. I want them to do well. So I've switched off blessing and I've switched on cursing. And people do that to us throughout the day. And perhaps we're just used to that in society. That just becomes normal and there's a level of hard-heartedness where we just accept it and we move on. But increasingly, as you soften your heart towards God, you may notice that these things become more sensitive to you. Or maybe they were already sensitive to you and you need to know how to deal with it. Here's how to deal with cursing going on between you and someone else just because of an everyday incident. Because of the nature of what I've done in the past, I've flown on a lot of aeroplanes and airports are familiar to me. And I have many stories from airports. Here's one of them. I'm dragging my luggage across the car park, heading towards the zebra crossing into the terminal. Now, as I'm approaching the terminal, I can see that there's a bus coming along the road slowly. And I'm going to be at the zebra crossing at the same time that bus is. And as I'm approaching, I kind of feel and notice subconsciously that that bus seems to be slightly accelerating. Maybe he's trying to beat me before I get to the zebra crossing. Something within me clicks and I, I quicken my pace and then I get to the zebra crossing and I deliberately put my foot out so the bus driver has to jolt the bus a little bit to a halt. And then I look at him and he looks at me and there's these daggers and I'm expressing frustration and he's expressing frustration and I walk across the zebra crossing having won. That incident doesn't leave me. It keeps coming round and round into my mind throughout the day. And I wonder why, why is this keep coming back? I keep thinking of this driver and keep thinking, oh, what was he doing? And then I'm thinking, oh, why did I react? You see, what's happened is this bond has been created between the bus driver and me. In the spirit realm, we could call these cords of connection. There's one coming from the bus driver to me, and there's one coming from me to the bus driver. And this is what happens when we have an interaction with someone that's angry, and there's mutual frustration with one another that's not let go of, that's not, let, that's not dealt with. So we're tied. So of course, throughout the day, we keep, I keep coming back to what happened. I keep replaying it because there's a tie. How do you break those ties? This process has to begin with humility and openness. I soften. I breathe more relaxed and go, wow, there's something going on in me that I need to deal with. Proverbs 26 verse 2 says, a curse without a cause cannot land. What that's saying is the reason the cursing that has gone on here, and we'll look at that, the reason why that's staying with me, landing, is because it has a reason. The, the curse has something to land on. The thing that it's landing on is in my heart. So I have to deal with my heart first. If I'm angry with someone and I'm having a reaction, and it's boiling within me, that is a spiritual energy. Jesus said to be very careful with anger, because here's the direction of anger. With anger, I want someone to be punished. With anger, I might want someone to not be there. In fact, 
I might even start to wish they weren't in my life and they just weren't around. And now I'm heading in the direction of murder. I'm removing them out of the world. Maybe not physically, but in my heart and mind, that's what I'm kind of agreeing with and wanting to happen. I'm wishing ill on them. That's a direction. That's a strong direction. That's why Jesus was strong about anger. I've become the judge and jury over this person's life. I've condemned them. I want to issue punishment. Yet the Lord says, vengeance is mine, not yours. And the thing is, God's vengeance is very different to my vengeance because God's dealing with situations is based on love and wisdom, not on anger, hatred, punishment. So I'm going to have to let this go. I'm holding on to this person with my anger. So I take that cord of connection and humbly admit to God, God, I'm angry. I want to punish them. I don't want to do that. I want to let go of that. And then, in a sense, I hand the cord over to God. That softening deals with the landing pad in my heart. It might keep coming back. I might have to do it several times, but that's how I deal with the landing pad in my heart. I turn away from wishing ill on them. I let them go. And in fact, I turn it the other way. I start to wish well on them. I bless them. As Jesus said, bless those who curse you. I hand the cord back to God. I'm not saying that what they did was right. I'm saying that that's between them and God. It's not my job to angrily sort that out. I breathe out. I relax. I let go. Then they've got a call towards me. Their anger is coming towards me. So how do I deal with that? Simply put, I come under the covering and protection of Jesus Christ because he's taken all the curses aimed at me on himself. Everything that maybe I even feel I'm due because of what I've done, he's taken it on himself. So I come under his covering of protection. We call that the covering of the blood of Jesus because the life is in the blood and he poured out his life for me. So I'm coming under the protection of his life. I'm saying, God, I won't protect myself. I let you protect me. I acknowledge I did wrong in this situation. I got angry. I'm not perfect. I'm not judging based on me being perfect and the other person not. And so, if this curse is coming towards me, would you protect me? Because I rely on you, not my own self-defense. You have covered my weaknesses. And I humble myself and come under his protection. So now the curses from other people, or from maybe the specific situation, are no longer just aimed at me. They're actually landing now on Christ. And he with his death and resurrection, has dealt with that. I can relax and I can hand the cord that is coming towards me from someone else onto God, into Christ, and breathe out and relax. In fact, if I want, I can say I refuse that cord. I hand it over to you. And wrapped up with that, I can break any energizing that might be coming in the atmosphere from other dark forces and say, I come under the covering of Jesus and in Jesus' name I refuse the energy of the enemy that would try and exaggerate and make worse this curse in my heart. I break it in the name of Jesus. Already, the softening and the breaking of these cords will be making a difference. And now, in the peace, in the shalom, while it's there, I can submit afresh to the Holy Spirit and say, I want to be walking in step with you 
every moment of this day where I, I acknowledge I've stepped out of alignment with you. I come into alignment with you. I yield to you, to Christ in me. It's no longer just me living, but you're living through me. And I accept your peace, your protection, your purposes through my life. And now I can bless the other person. So I wish that person well. I wish these people good things that despite their stuff, just like me, like I have stuff, and despite that, you bless me. Would you bless them? I come into agreement with you, God, that they would know your love, protection, covering, speaking, rebuke in love in their lives. They would know your closeness. And I maybe would prophesy and speak good things over them that come to my heart and mind prophetically from the Holy Spirit. Whatever comes to my mind to say that's good over them over their lives, I do that. I bless them. And then when I've done that for a while, I breathe out and carry on my day. And if these things repeat, then you do the process again. Till it's completed enough that the energy is gone out of that situation. I did that eventually with this bus driver. When it came back for the seventh, eighth time, I started to do this process. I realized, oh, my heart is tied up with this bus driver. And I let go of my judgment and I came under the covering of the protection of Jesus for the cursing that might be coming my way. And I blessed this man and his family and what will be going on in his day. And I entered back into Shalom. And so we can be alert to everyday cursing and we can break its energy in our lives. <laughs>